Oh, hi guys. Um, today we're going to do something that I call a feature patchwork, which is what you do when you take a small piece of fabric that you really like and you want to use in a pad topper, but it's not big enough to cover your entire topper pattern. Um, there's also other considerations, like if you have a special um, piece of yardage, you know, you get a half yard of something, but the way that the pattern repeats doesn't lend itself to easily fitting under a topper pattern without wasting a bunch of the images around it, which I'll demonstrate with this first one and explain better. Um, anyway, this is one of my favorite ways to make pads, and people always ask me how I make these pads, so I decided to just sit down in the kitchen, make this video, and show it to you. So um, let's go down to my sewing table and get started. Okay, so I have this fabulous fabric with these canisters of different kinds of tea. Um, there's jasmine tea, Darjeeling tea, breakfast tea, chamomile tea, etc. And there's more on here. And so the problem with this fabric is that if I take my pattern here and I set this down, I'm going to be taking a piece of this, this one down here and a piece of this one up here just to get this one centered into the pad. So I would be wasting this image and that image in addition to which, I think it would diminish how pretty this is. And so instead of just having this and maybe the tips of these on the wings, I would like to just focus on this one piece and maybe highlight it with a different fabric. So I have gone through my fabric stores and I decided that to highlight this breakfast tea, I'd like to use this material. And I think that this is just going to look really nice next to it. And so I'm going to make a pad with this image and this fabric that's going to end up being exactly like I did with this pad here. So I'm going to show you how I did this to feature a smaller piece of fabric like this. Um, this is just another tea box from the same fabric. Um, it's this one here that I've taken from a, a different row on the fabric. So I'm going to cut out the pieces that I need for this. Um, and we'll come right back. Okay, so the next thing we need to do, I'm going to move the camera a little bit here so you can see better. There we go. So the next thing we need to do, um, I've cut out just this little breakfast tea panel. And I, I took care to cut it so that it was, you know, five inches wide. Um, and it's a little bit bigger than, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's just a, like six and a quarter inches long. But I wanted the width to be something consistent so it would be easy for me to measure out the, the border fabric that I'm gonna cut. Um, so what you wanna do is lay your pattern because I'm gonna want this in the center. This is the piece that I'm gonna highlight in the center of the pad. So I want this right in the middle, something like that. And then what I wanna do is I wanna look and see how big the pieces I need to border this with should be. Um, to, to cover my entire uh, pattern. Now remember that we're going to use a quarter inch seam when we attach any piece of fabric together. They're going to be sewn together. So you're going to lose a quarter inch off of the piece that you're attaching to it and you're going to lose a quarter inch off the border of this because those are going to be creating a seam. And, and so you're going to lose a quarter of an inch. So this will end up being four and a half inches wide when we're done um, because we're going to put something here and something here. Um, and so you look at how wide your pattern is, and it looks like these wings are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half. So the pattern is seven and a half, which means I'm gonna lose a quarter here and a quarter here. So I need something that will take this out to eight inches. So I think if we cut a two inch strip um, to put on both sides of this, then that's gonna be all that we need to, to cover the wingspan. But up here you see at the top and at the bottom, um, it, it needs a little more. So we've got like a two and a half inch gap up here. So I think maybe a three inch strip for the top and a three inch strip for the bottom should get it. So what you wanna do is take your piece of fabric. This has been... Okay, so for brevity's sake, I sped this up so that you didn't have to just sit here and watch me cutting my fabric. What I did here was I took a rotary cutter and I cut my fabric out into, um, I chose to go with a two and a half inch strip so I could use my waist for my quilting project, which also uses two and a half inch strips. 
and then the three inch strips that we talked about. And I didn't figure you needed to listen to me talk and watch in real time as I cut my fabric up. You can use scissors, a regular ruler, whatever you have available to cut out pieces of fabric that will take that piece out to fit your pattern. So we're gonna take our, um, our three inch pieces and I just dropped one on the floor because I'm graceful like that. And here are our two inch pieces for the wings. So we're gonna wanna cut one. And again, this is where you're gonna see me eyeballing because we're gonna cut this all up. This is not a quilt square. So you don't have to be exact with this. That's the, oh, and see, I've got a piece of selvage left on here. That's no, no good. I need to fold my fabric better. All right, so what I'm gonna do with these is I'm gonna eyeball cut these because like I said, these are not going into a quilt. This is not gonna be exact and it's all gonna get chopped up anyway. And the only part of this side that's gonna be used is the part that's gonna finish off the length for our wings. So you just make it look approximate. Hold on, still in frame there. Okay, so now this is gonna be your sides. And then you take your three inch strip. I'll cut off this ratty looking end here. And if you wanna be exact and super, super good about this with your ruler and everything, you go ahead and do that. Okay, and then take this one up here. All right, so now I'm gonna save all of these pieces to use in my quilting project later. But so basically what we're gonna do is I'm going to go and press these pieces of fabric so they're nice and flat. And then when I come back, I'm gonna sew the sides on first and then I'm gonna sew these on. And I will come right back and show you the sewing. Okay, so I'm just gonna sew these with a quarter inch seam. And um, after I get started on this, I will probably speed up the video so you don't have to watch all of this, but you can just see what I've done here. For those of you who aren't really familiar with um, quilting, the way I've been taught to do um, attaching things like this is you put the needle down very close to the edge, then you backstitch off of the edge, and then sew all the way down. Okay. The key thing here is not to get ultra perfectionist and psych yourself out on this if you've never done something like this before. Um, you're just making a border around this central feature image. And we're going to chop this all up later after we trace our topper onto it. So this is not an exercise in perfection. I just finger pressed these seams because I was videotaping this and I didn't want to stop the video and come back but you really wanna stop after you get the sides on and press those seams open before you add the, the other sides of the fabric. And that's really the only commentary I have for you during this sewing part. Just sew the four pieces of fabric on the edge of your central image. Okay, so now I'm gonna go press this out and trim it up and then we'll be back. Okay, so now I've got the, the seams pressed and everything's all opened up, and this is what it looks like on the front. Um, but I've got it wrong side facing me, because, and you see how imperfect that is. You don't need to be any more perfect than that. The only thing that matters is these four seams here. Okay, because we're going to chop this up. So now you're going to take your pattern and you want to center it over the central image. So, and because my patterns are all quarter fold patterns, I have this nice little center mark. And so I usually just stick my thumb in it like that. And then straighten it up. That doesn't look centered to me. But apparently it is. Well, all right then. So then you center, ooh, and we cut that really close on the top to bottom, but it fits. So we're going to just trace around and I'll probably speed this up for you. Ta 
Ta-da, and there you have it. So I'm gonna cut this out and then I'll show you what our finished topper looks like. Okay, so here's our topper finished and you're gonna notice that I made this one a little wonky and off center. I'm not sure how I did that, but see, I make mistakes and my pads come out imperfect, but I'm gonna sew this one up into a pad and it's gonna be beautiful and you're gonna love it and I'll show you when it's finished. So when you make teeny tiny little mistakes, like I drew my, I traced my pattern apparently off center after I went to all that trouble, but this is gonna still be gorgeous. So persevere when you make mistakes, you never know what's gonna end up being your favorite. Um, and so at the end of the video, I'll show you all the finished pads. But for now, I wanna move on to showing you some different things you can do. This is how you just supplement with one piece of complementary fabric and you get something that looks like this, where you have this one complementary pattern um, to go with your central image that you were trying to highlight. Um, but I'm going to show you some other things that I've done and kind of talk about those processes a little bit. And then I will make um, another pad uh, with several complementary pieces of fabric to show you how you can piece that together too. This pad was one of the first patchwork pads I ever made. And um, I don't know if you can see my pad making skills were not as good then, but I still, I use this uh, as an overnight and I've used it many, many times. It's super comfy. One of the questions that I got when I first started making patchwork pads is, can't you feel the seams? Aren't the seams uncomfortable? And the answer is no and no. Um, they're not uncomfortable, you can't feel them. And this pad has many, many seams. And I'm gonna cut to a picture here of what it looked like when I was piecing this design together. Okay, so this was the piece of fabric that I started this with, and it was from a panel of fairy fabric that I had, and I didn't have very much left. So to feature this little guy, I started chopping up this piece of fabric every which way I could think, and this was kind of how the piecing progressed. So don't be afraid to play with it like a jigsaw puzzle. If you have a piece of fabric, you just keep going uh, until you have something that's visually pleasing and that your topper pattern will fit on. I had to add this border in the end so that it would all fit, and then the pad that you see is what I ended up with. So anyway, um, that you can piece things together in complicated ways like that if you'd like. Um, I was just sitting to there one day and and it, it looked like something fun to do, so I made this, this pretty little guy. And you can do that too, um, that's the thing. If you have fabric that you love but you no longer have a piece big enough to, to cover the pattern that you want, chop up little pieces of it and assemble them together in a, a patchwork conglomeration that will fit on your pattern and quite frankly I think this is lovely. Um, I wish that when I made this I had been better at putting pads together but I still think he's perfect and this pad is really serviceable. I've used it um, ever since I made it. I've used it several times per cycle as an overnight and it's it's wonderful and he makes me smile. My little fairy guy makes me smile every time I see it. Now this one is a more recent one that I did for a friend and um, it's one of my favorites. I think that she is just lovely. Um, I call her Bunny Girl and I'm going to give you the, the fabric real quick that I used to make this and how I made this choice. Okay, so now this is a piece of fabric um, from the Fort Firefly series um, designed by um, an artist named Tegan White and I love these. These are all organic cotton prints and I fell in love with the, the Tegan White fabrics from the first time I saw one and so I have purchased quite a few Tegan White fabrics. I have about nine or twelve different Tegan White prints and um, I had been saving this. This is the last piece of a half yard um, that I bought specifically so that I could make a pad for myself out of this, this girl with the blue dress. Well, I had a friend who I'm doing a pad swap with, and she asked if she could have some of this fabric, and I said, well, I don't know if I have enough, but I really wanted to make her one because I have, you know, there were nine, well, partial, there were six full and these three partial girls up here. I was like, surely I can make two pads out of this, um, but in order to make the one that I've been planning to make for myself out of this piece of fabric, I would have, you know, cut into pretty much every other usable girl on the, the, the piece of fabric. 
So this is where it comes in handy to, to cut these out and, and use the smaller, you know, just pick one motif out of the, out of the piece. So that's what I did. I, I cut her out here, as you can see, but then the question became, what do I put around her to make this really special? And, you know, I immediately saw that this and this and this all complemented this, this pretty bunny girl fabric. It just looks really nice. Well, there's a reason for that. They were designed in a series of fabrics that go together. So here's one thing. If, if you feel that it's not one of your talents to match colors or fabrics together, you know, let's say that you feel that you don't have the ability to look at this pretty little image that's not big enough to make a whole pad and say, well, that's a great idea, Amy, but I'm not good at picking out fabrics that would complement them well. Um, there's a whole, I mean, throughout the fabric world, you can look them up. They're called pre-cuts or charm packs, um, which are five inch charm packs or five inch squares. Jelly rolls are two and a half inch strips and um, layer cakes is what they call them. I don't know what the obsession with the food is because they don't look like food to me. But anyway, um, they're called layer cakes or the 10 inch squares. And they come in packs of pre-cut pieces of fabric that all coordinate with one another. And so you could definitely do something like that. Start looking into charm packs or jelly rolls or whatever. Um, but if like I did, you happen to have a bunch of fabrics from the same um, series or the same line of prints, they're probably going to look good together. So that's one thing to always keep in mind is that if you have something that's, you know, small and you want to feature it like this, whether it's on a pad or a quilt square or anything else that you're a pillow cover or whatever you're doing, um, look for coordinates that come, you know, if it's not something that you feel confident picking out on your own, look for something in coordinates from the same series or line of fabrics. Okay. So what I did with this pad and I'm not going to go through the whole sewing process with you. What I did with this pad was exactly the same thing that I did with the, the blue um, breakfast tea one I just showed you. I made a border out of this on the sides. And I made a border out of this of the same width. So I did two inches here, two inches here. I did two. I know Cadence. I'm so mean. I won't let her dig in any more holes. I already had to go out on the patio. Okay, sorry. So I made a border here and I made a border here and I really wanted to include this third fabric because I thought it just looked so magnificent with her. Um, so I made this border skinnier than it needed to be to cover the pattern and then I finished off with another border of this on the top. So basically when I sewed the pieces together, there was the featured piece in the middle and then I put this piece for the border, this piece for the border, and this piece on the ends. Um, and then it came out like this with this complimentary edge here. So I think this is lovely. I think this turned out great. And fortunately, the, the friend that I made it for, she likes it too. Um, so there's that pad. And then the final one I'm going to do, I'm going to do another one here with you. Um, I'm going to show you how to do a, a, a cute little double border, kind of like, I, I think of it as, you know, like a double matted frame um, for um, a cute little funny piece that I want to show you. I want to show you this panel of fabric because I'm kind of in love with it. And as you can see from the little selvage information here, um, it's called Hey Cupcake by, uh, it looks like Dan DiPaolo for Clothworks. Um, I just wanted to give you the fabric information in case you want to look this up. I got this off of fabric.com and it's called Hey Cupcake. And these are just adorable. I'm going to stand up and see if I can show you. And it has all of these cute little motifs that are all about cupcakes. And I like, you know, little little tiny things like this that are only like four inches square. I'll have a skinny mocha double vodka latte. Yeah, hello. That sort of thing. Cute little cupcake on a pie stand. And then, you know, funny little things about salads versus cupcakes and chocolate and I'm going to eat and that sort of thing. So anyway, um, I've cut out a piece that I really like that we're going to have to pass on and we're about to get into that with the corner. an idea for you. Um, this little motif cut from that fabric I just showed you says, I love salad. Um, I love salad with a cupcake. And I just thought that was adorable. And I like the colors. So we're going to do first, I'm going to let Cadence outside so that she'll be quiet. I know, you know, um, lest you think that Cadence is just a perpetually unhappy dog.
uh, Cadence is a red bone coon hound and red bone coon hounds are very vocal. Um, she doesn't always whine, but that is her primary way of quote, talking end quote to me. Uh, when she bays or howls, it's usually more purposeful. Um, but she's a very vocal dog and we knew that when we got her, so it doesn't bother us. But lest you think that she's just always crying and happy, she's not. She's just a scent hound and it's how she communicates with us. She's actually a Spoiled dog, man. Okay. So here's what I wanted to do with this. I looked through my fabrics. Now this one is a coordinating fabric that I bought. It's actually part of that same uh, Dan DiPaolo um, Hey Cupcake series. It was made to be a complimentary fabric. It matches this black and white check, I'm assuming. But anyway, it looks really cute, but I had this red floral um, fat quarter that I got from Walmart of all places. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to do now this one's gonna be real difficult. I'm gonna to have to fudge it, see? So this is where I'm gonna to talk to you about some of the things we do to see if we can't. I don't have a full quarter inch on this, so I'm gonna to try to do it as close to the edge as I can to see if I can, you know, like maybe a, when I sew this on, I'm gonna to try to do like a 1 8 inch to see if I can make sure you can still read the I Love Salad on there. But I've already cut these pieces, so what my plan is, what I did when I kind of designed this in my head last night, is that I want to do a really thin red edge like this. And then I want to come in with this black and do a thicker one, so something akin to this. Let me see if you can see that. Can you see what I'm kind of doing there with like, so it'll look like a double mat. So I'm going to um, finish cutting these out and then I'm going to see if I can sew the red border on and um, then I'll come back and show you what I ended up with. Okay, so I'm going to, I've, I've sewn this all on and look, we had success. Yay. Um, so I'm going to go around and I'm going to cut this down to about an inch and a quarter so that what I'm left with after I sew the black onto it is just one inch of strip or maybe three quarters. So I'll make this, I'll make all of this one inch around. I'm going to just trim it off to one inch and then come back. So I'll speed up the part where I'm cutting, but you can still see what I'm doing. Okay, so now we have this one inch, and then I'm going to take this and just make sure that it's still going to be long enough to cover my pad. Oh, it's going to be real close. Really close. Well, let's just put it on there and see what happens. I'll speed this cutting process up for you too, and then we'll come back when it's sewn together. Okay, so I've gotten 15 kinds of lucky. You can see that none of this is perfect and it doesn't have to be. The only part that's important is this part in the middle and I think that came out exactly how I wanted it to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and trace the topper onto the back of this. We got really lucky. It's super, super close. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this topper out. Then I'll come back and show you the toppers and then for a final thing, I'll come back and show you the pads that I've created with this um, so that you can see how they turned out. Um, but I hope this was helpful watching me just throw fabric around. You saw What you saw was me playing with fabric. And that's what I'm hoping that you get out of this is that you can sit down here and just play with fabric and things that you think look nice together just cut them all up and throw them together in any conglomeration that you think until you come up with something that you find aesthetically pleasing and that will fit on your pad topper pattern. Um, and then you just use that um, like you would use any other topper that you've cut out of a, of a plain piece of fabric. So I really hope that this was helpful. I have a blast doing this. And so that's why I wanted to show it to you because that's what I want for you too. I want you to have a blast doing this.
Okay, so here are the toppers all finished for the two pads that I assembled here. Um, and here in a second, just like magic, you're going to see them turn into pads. Yay, there they are. These are the two pads that I made, and they're adorable and fun, and they make people happy. And I hope this was helpful because what I wanted to do was give you some ideas for how you can you know, do more than just put a single print on top of something. I wanted to show you how you can utilize cute little pieces of fabric that, you know, you would like to have on one of these, but they aren't big enough, you know, and just maybe introduce an idea that you hadn't thought of that you can add things to it. Um, and I don't know, these pads are always the ones that I make this way that people like the best. And they always say, oh my goodness, how did you do that? So this is how I do it. Um, so anyway, thanks for coming to the channel, and I will see you again soon. Bye.